Welcome to the Marley Bird YouTube channel. I'm Marley Bird, proud spokesperson for Red Heart Yarn. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this really cute and squishy cowl called the Birdseed Cowl. I named this the Birdseed Cowl because of the stitch pattern. It uses a partnering of ribbing and seed stitch to create this really great ribbed look with a cool texture. And when I say it's squishy, I'm telling you guys like the squishiness is awesome. You literally want to put this just around your head, let it rest on your neck, and it will feel really good all day long. Now the story behind this cowl is this. I was going to a book signing for Diana Gabaldon and the Atlander series and I wanted to bring a project with me because I often will bring a knitting or crochet project but I didn't have one that was small. So I went ahead and I grabbed some Boutique Treasures yarn because I love the yarn and I love the colors. I grabbed a pair of size 9 needles and I set off. While I was at the event, I cast on some stitches and I just started knitting this. And I came up with this stitch pattern, which I'm sure is available in other places. I had never seen it before though. And I love the way it looked. And because it has that cool seed stitch in between the ribbing, I, I thought it was cool to call it the bird seed since my last name is Bird. So that's how the bird seed cowl came to be. As I was working at it at the on this at the event, many people were coming up and asking me about the yarn because of the color changes, aren't they? amazing. The Boutique Treasures yarn comes in many different colors and the yarn does all the work for you. It changes colors along the way in long color changes so you get the really cool striped look without having to do a lot of work, right? I'm grabbing just a bunch of different colors right now so you can see some different colorways. Um, and so when people were asking me about the yarn, they were like, wow, that's really amazing that the yarn does that. And then they would feel it. They all, I mean, we're all knitters. We all do this, right? We, we grab the cowl and they were like, oh my gosh, that feels so cool. It's squishy. Um, it's, it's pretty darn cool. Um, so that's the story behind the bird seed cowl, and I'm excited to show you how to make this today. For this video, all I need you to do is go download the pattern. It's available for free on redheart.com. There is a link to it right there on your screen, or for those of you who are on a mobile device, it's down in the video notes below. More often than not, you can find all the links I mentioned in the video in the video notes below. So if there's ever something that you feel like you've missed, go down there and I'm sure you can find it. While you're down there, why don't you go ahead and smash that like button, as my kids say, so that way everybody knows that you enjoyed this video and you enjoy the Marley Bird videos. Um, it really does help a lot when you do hit that, that little like button. So if you will take the time to do that right now, that'd be great. Besides the pattern, I also need you to grab some yarn, some worsted weight yarn, and some size 9 needles. Now, in this pattern, I used size 9 24-inch circular needles just to accommodate the number of stitches I used for the cowl. See how big it is? You can absolutely knit this on straight needles. It's just going to have your stitches really squished on there. Um, so I will leave it up to you. In the pattern, I did write size 9 24 inch circulars, but if you're just like, you know, Marley, I think I can handle it on some size 9 straight needles, go ahead and do that. Today, I'm going to show you how to um, knit this on straight needles and on circulars so you can kind of see how, how um, both of them work up. Once you have all of your, your materials and your pattern, why don't we go ahead, jump in, and get started. You have your materials. Let's jump in and learn how to do the bird seed stitch. For this pattern, I'm going to cast on with a long tail. So I'm going to begin with a slip knot and place that on my needle. Once I have it on my needle, I can carry on doing the long tail cast on for 59 stitches or my multiple of four plus three. If you need more instructions on how to do the long tail cast on, you can go ahead and click that link right there or click on the link down in the video notes for more detailed instructions. I went ahead and cast on 19 stitches, which is my multiple of four plus three. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to jump into row one of the cowl, okay? So row one of the cowl says I need to knit three stitches. So I'm going to go ahead and knit my first three stitches. So one, oops, two, three. Next part of the instructions say to place a marker.
Now this is where I have learned when I was traveling with this project, in order to keep track where I was in the, pr in the project, I made sure that my stitch markers on either side of the cowl were a different color. It really helped me know what the first three stitches need to be. So for example, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab this stitch marker right here with the green on top, okay? And I made these stitch markers, aren't they cute? So I'm gonna grab this stitch marker and I'm gonna place it on there. And to me, this green on top is going to signify that these first three stitches are always going to be knit okay so once I do that I jump into my pattern repeat which is purl to knit to all the way to the end purl to knit to purl to knit to now you want to make sure as you're going between your knits and your purls you're bringing your yarn between your needles okay because you don't want to get any accidental yarn overs I will take this time right now to point out that I am using a different yarn than what the pattern calls for just for this first part of the demonstration and then I'm going to show you what the yarn looks like that's called for in the pattern for other parts of the demonstration. <clears throat> I'm to the end of the row. I'm going to switch hands and go on to my next row. Now my row two is my wrong side and it begins with a knit one and then I jump into a purl two. So purl one, purl two, and I place another marker. Now this is another example of where I wanna place a marker that's different than the one I used. I can choose to use a marker that is similar to the one I used, just different colors, or I can go completely different and have that be my, my new marker. So let's go that way. I'm gonna put this one on here and let that be my new marker to signify that on this side, whenever I see this marker, I'm gonna have a pearl or a knit one and purl two. Now I jump into my pattern, which is knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two. And I'm gonna do this all the way down the row. Now what will happen here is even though we're doing this knit two and purl two on both rows, we have started the knit two and purl two at different points in the pattern or in the in the row in the in the stitch pattern sequence so it's going to make our stitches offset okay so that's why we don't get a full on knit two purl two ribbing here we're actually going to get ribbing separated by seed stitch it's going to look really cool now I've switched sides and you can see here my two markers, they're completely different markers. Um, and I know here just because I've told myself this marker is going to represent my right side row, which means I'm going to start off with my first three knits. Another thing I can do is grab a removable stitch marker and go ahead and put it on this side of my knitting to signify that this is a right side. So now here's another way for me to make sure that I'm always on track in my pattern. If I'm holding my yarn or my, my project in my left hand and I see this marker on the right side, I know I'm on the right side of my work, which means I'm going to go ahead and begin with three knits. Okay? So there, right there, there are two different ways for you to make sure that you keep track. I'm gonna show you a third way here in just a second. And when I get to the end of the work, all I do is turn my work and take a look at my stitch markers once again. Because they're different, I can see that this one here symbolizes to me that I'm gonna begin with my knit one, purl two here at the beginning, and then jump into my pattern, which is knit two, purl two. Okay, and again, my right side marker, the removable marker I attached is on the opposite side. So if I were using that as my reminder, I'm not looking at it on this side. So I would know that I'm on my wrong side row. And when I turn my work here again, I'm going to show you another way that you can keep track of where you are in the pattern also. All right, so I'm at the end of my work. I'm going to turn and here we are. I'm at the front side again get my markers back over here. Here's my right side marker. I know I'm going to begin with my knit three and I'm going to show you something else here. I've already showed you how to use these markers to help you remember what row you're on. I've showed you how to use this to help you remember what row you're on. But how about we remember what stitch we're on? Here at the beginning, we're always going to begin with a knit, okay? So both, no matter which side, we're still beginning with a knit. It all matters what are the next two stitches we're beginning with. Well, right here, you can see I'm already beginning to get a column 
of knit stitches. See all of those knits, all those nice V's? So that lets me know that I am already starting with a knit, okay? Now, here is something that is consistent through the entire stitch pattern. Whenever you begin with your knit two, your first knit of your knit two will always start on that column of knits. So right here, I'm on this column of knits and I know I'm at the start of my knit two. So there's knit one, knit two, which signifies my first knit three, right? Slip my marker. And now here are my, here's my column of pearls. See how there's a pearl, 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 pearl? I know that my first pearl of my pearl two is gonna start off on my column of pearls. Now, this is my seed stitch column, and that will always just be represented by whatever the previous stitch was, okay? Here we are, I'm at my column of knits, so I know I'm at a knit, the first knit of my knit two. I'm at my column of pearls, so I'm at the first pearl of my pearl two, so on and so forth. I hope that makes sense. That will help you maintain where you are in pattern. So like right here, I'm looking at my column of pearls, so I know I'm at a pearl two, and I'm at my column of knits, so I'm at my knit two. Remember, the first stitch of your pearl two or the first stitch of your knit two will always be on whatever the column stitch is. So right here, I'm looking at my pearls, so I'm gonna pearl my first of my pearl two, slip my marker, pearl my second, and finish with my knit two. Does that make sense? Let's do that one more time. I'm gonna turn my work. I'm looking at the wrong side, and I know that because my removable stitch marker is on the other side, so that's my first, my first check mark. I'm looking at my two different markers, and I'm looking at the marker that I have designated as my wrong side marker, which lets me know that I'm gonna begin with my knit one, purl two. But then I also know that it's a knit one, purl two, because I always knit my first stitch, and now I'm looking at my column of pearls, which lets me know that my first stitch of whatever it is, so my first stitch of pearls, always goes on whatever, or my first stitch of my purl two or my knit two always goes on my column. So that's my pearls, slip my marker. Here's my column of knits. So I go ahead and I knit two and so on and so forth. I'm gonna go ahead and get to the end of the row here and then I'm gonna pull in some work that I have worked up on one of the boutique treasures yarn by Red Hearts. Um, I really like this yarn. It's a wool and acrylic blend yarn, but I love the long color changes in the yarn. I think it looks really great. All right, so here we are at the end of the row. Let's take a peek at what we have. Why don't we go ahead and turn our work? And you can see here, I'm already starting to get my, my little ribbing going on. So I have my column of knits. See those? my column of pearls, and separating my column of knits and pearls are two columns of seed stitch. That's why I called this the bird seed. Let's take a look at another example really quick. Set this aside and pull this one in. So here's one that I've already worked up. You can see I still have two different markers. I went completely different markers this time. Um, and I did mark my right side row so I know which one's my right side. And I can go ahead, pick up my work and start working. But you can see here, even with the Boutique Treasures yarn, and this is the color spectrum, it's starting to do my color changes here even at the very beginning. Can you see that? Look how pretty that is. And just going along here, I know that when I get to the first column of knits. That'll be my first stitch of my knit two. So it would be right here, it'd be knit one, purl two, knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two, knit two, so on and so forth. Let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to grab the same yarn. And for those of you who've been following along on my videos, you know that I like to just tie on my new yarn onto my old yarn, just to tie it on there so it holds its place, but I will go back and untie that when I tuck in my ends. So I pick up my work. My first uh, check mark is my right side is not showing because it's marked on the other side. My second check mark is that my two different stitch markers um, that are there, they represent different points in the pattern for me. So I know that this one represents where I began with my knit one, purl two. So even without anything else, I know that. So I could go ahead and knit one because I always start with my knit one. 
And here I can see my full column of pearls. So I know I'm at the first start of my pearl two. So I would pearl two, slip my marker. I'm at my column of knits. So I'm at the first part of my knit two. So knit one, knit two, pearl one, pearl two. So on and so forth. Pretty cool, right? Now this yarn, I found that when I use needles that are a little bit more blunt than uh, versus really pointy tips, I found it easier to knit with, just one of those little tips. Not that it's impossible to knit with if the tips are really pointy, it just tends to split the yarn a lot more. My needle got caught in my yarn a little bit more, whereas if I was using the blunt tips, I didn't have that problem. Now, I love that I can go along in this pattern. My little yarn is sneaking up on me. I wound it up into another ball and I can see the different color changes happening with this yarn um, that just keeps it really exciting. So as you're working on this project that is you know, relatively simple and you're out and about, maybe you're at a movie or you're at your, you know, as I said, a sporting event or church or a concert, or, you know, maybe you're just stuck in traffic. This is interesting enough in that you get to see all of the color changes happening in the yarn. And then you get to see all the squishiness happening um, with the actual stitch pattern. Cause it looks really cool. It actually gets really squishy. Can you see how pretty it looks? Isn't that great? I love it. Okay, now you know how to do the bird seed stitch. Really easy, right? You just do knit two, purl two, but it all is determined by how you begin. So whatever method you wanna use as far as how you're gonna remember what the first three stitches need to be, great. You have three different options here for you to know how to do that. You make this as long as you want it to be. For the cowl that I made, I made it 30 inches long, okay? Because then I was able to wrap it around and then do a seam it up. So if you wanna make yours 30 inches, great. Go ahead and make it 30 inches. If you wanna make it a little smaller, you can do that. I will caution you, if you make this a little smaller, it might be a little bit too tight to go around your neck if you want it to have a little bit of room. So I think 30 inches is a good length. But if you decide to make it longer, that would be awesome also. You can make it really nice and long, twist it and put it around your neck also. Just remember, it's going to take more yarn if you do that. Let me go ahead and I'm gonna show you how to bind off this stitch pattern loosely and then how to seam it up so that you're ready to go when you wanna make this pattern. Okay, let's take a look down here at another little sample that I've worked up. I've worked up another sample of this cowl in the really pretty flora colorway. Isn't that pretty? I love all the pinks. Um, this is the length I need it to be, and I'm at the point where I want to bind off. And I wanna make sure that I bind off loosely, because I don't want this side of my cowl to be um, so much tighter than this side. I wanna have that nice stretch. So let's learn how to bind off loosely. Now right here at the beginning, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to work in pattern, meaning I'm going to work these stitches as they would have normally been worked when I was working the pattern, and then I'm going to bind off. So right here at the beginning, I know that this stitch for me on this piece represents that it's the right side. Let's do my second check, and there's my marker right there, so I know I'm looking at the right side, which means I know I'm going to start off with my knit one, and then I jump into my knit two, right? So this is my knit three here at the very beginning. So I'm gonna go ahead and knit one, and I'm gonna knit my second one because that's in pattern. And here's where it gets interesting. This is where it's different than the normal bind off. Are you ready? A normal bind off would be where we take our left hand needle, grab that first stitch, and have it leapfrog up and over that second stitch, right? Okay, I don't wanna do that for this. What I wanna do, let's put everything back where it was. I'm right here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my left hand needle, I'm gonna put it in the front leg of those two stitches on my right hand needle, and then I'm gonna knit them together. Might seem awkward at first, but I'm telling you it, it works, okay? So there it is, I'm left with one stitch. I go ahead, working in pattern, I would do another knit. I have two stitches on my right hand needle. Take my left hand needle, stick it in the front leg of those two stitches, and knit them together. I'm gonna go ahead and remove my marker. And then I know I'm on my purl two now, right? So I'm gonna purl this first one. And then just like before, I'm gonna take my right left hand needle, stick it in the front leg of those two stitches and knit them. 
I'm gonna purl the next stitch. And you'll notice I'm moving my yarn back to the back because I've got to knit these two stitches. So I stick my needle into the front leg of those two stitches and I knit them. I'm to my knit two, so I go ahead and knit my first one, do my bind off, knit my second one, do my bind off. I'm at my purl two, so I'm gonna purl the first one, do my bind off, purl my second one, and do my bind off. You can see right here, look, it's already getting nice and stretchy, which makes it perfect to be the companion to the cast on that I used. Go ahead, finish binding off all of your stitches in this method, and then we're going to seam it up. I finished my bind off, let's see how stretchy it is. Take a look at this bind off. Holy moly, is it stretchy. And it is the perfect companion to the way I started off with my long tail cast on. You'll notice I left a very long tail when I cut my yarn. And the reason I did that is because I'm gonna use my tail to seam my two ends together. All I've done is I've taken my cowl and I folded it together so that my cast on edge and my bind off edge match up. I also want to make sure that the right side of my work is facing me. So that's where this stitch marker once again comes in handy. I'm going to use a large eye tapestry needle and go ahead and thread the yarn onto my needle. Because my yarn is already attached to this side of my work, all I need to do is attach it to this side. And what I'm going to do is as I'm sewing this together, I want to make sure that my ridges line up. So my, my knit ridges, see how they all line up? If I make sure they line up from the beginning to the end, I won't have a chance of my piece coming, um, beginning to get cockeyed or anything, right? So all I wanna do is make sure everything's lined up here at the beginning, and as I begin seaming up, I wanna make sure that when it's time to seam up this point of the cowl, I matching it up to this point of the cowl, okay? Now, when I'm doing this particular seam up, the stitches will be offset just ever so slightly by about half a stitch, but it, it will be totally fine. It's not noticeable, okay? It's gonna be great. Just wear that portion on the back of your neck. So here at the start, all I'm going to do is I'm gonna take my needle, and I'm gonna start over here on this side, and I'm going to put my work, my needle, into my work going up just so that the pieces are connected. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. So now I've essentially done a figure eight join. I'm gonna pop over here and I know that my first stitch here in my, my row is my, my knit, it's my knit column. So I'm gonna stick my needle through that knit column, okay? I'm sticking it through the knit column on that side and I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna try and go into the very first row of this knit column over here, see that? So I'm going up that knit column. And then when they come together, see what I mean about them being off by about half a stitch, but it's totally okay. Now, I know I have three stitches between this column and this column, right? So I have my seed stitches right here, I have my row of pearls, and my seed stitch right here. Without getting super duper technical and making sure that everything is absolutely perfect as far as the stitches coming together, all I'm gonna say is, do your best to get three stitches joined up, so that way when you get back to the knit row columns, they match up again. When I come down here, I'm going to come over here, so I came out at that point, so I'm gonna come and I'm going to go in right there. Okay, let's see here. That is, I'm splitting a stitch. I can see right there, I'm coming into that column right there. See that stitch? So I'm gonna go into that stitch. I know I'm not into my pearls, my pearl column. And then I come over here to this side and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm gonna make sure I go in between or around the stitches. I'm not sure what the best way to say it is. As you're seaming up with this yarn, be very careful not to pull it too much because it will begin to separate because the twist on this yarn is not super tight. So you wanna be careful of that as well. I'm gonna come back over here and I'm going to grab my pearl column at this point and make sure I'm grabbing it at the correct point. I'm gonna pull this through. I can already tell that my yarn's getting a little bit loose there. 
and I pop up over here and I'm gonna do the same thing. Make sure I grab my pearls. And I should be here to my seed stitch yet again. I hope that makes sense by me saying pearls, knit, seed stitch, and all that good stuff. I come over here. I'm at my seed stitch. Give it a gentle tug just to bring the edges together. And I'm back to my knit column. So I'm gonna make sure I go into my knit column. And then when I come over here, I wanna make sure I go into my knit column over here also. It's just a way to really help yourself bring things together. You see how that works? Okay. I carry on doing the same thing. So I'm gonna go into my seed stitch. Go into my seed stitch over here. I wanna make sure I'm in the right one. Take the time to find the right one. Don't try and hustle through this. You've put all of this work into this really beautiful cowl. Take the time to make sure you're pulling it together correctly, okay? And then go into my pearl over here. There I am. Sometimes as I'm doing this, I will look for the next column also to make sure that I'm not there yet. So meaning I just went into my pearls before that, right? So here I'm making sure that I'm in my seed stitch and I am. And now I'm back to my knits. See my knits? So easy to identify the knits because they are that really pretty, the V of them, right? Now what's going on as we're doing this, and the reason we have the right side facing us is the raw edge is getting tucked to the inside of our cowl. So our nice edge is coming out here, but the raw edge is going to the inside of the cowl. Go ahead and finish seaming up your cowl, and I'm gonna show you how to finish it off at the very end of the, of the cowl, and then how to weave in your tails. Whew, that takes a while to seam up, doesn't it? Let's take a look at the mattress stitch once it's complete. As you take a look down here, you can see I've completed the mattress stitch and I have, once again, I matched up the columns of knit stitches the best I could when I did this particular bind off. When you do this bind off, it does leave a nice thick seam in the inside of your cowl where, and that's where you can weave in all of your tails if you want. If you don't like this thick seam or you're not really a fan of the mattress stitch, you could go ahead and just do a whip stitch, making sure also that you match up the ends. Let me show you on the actual example what I mean. On the finished cowl, when I did this one, I decided not to use the mattress stitch. I did just a quick kind of whip stitch together where I joined up the edges. All I've done was when I put the edges together, I went through and I just put together the best I could, wove it all together. And you can see where the, the columns are a little bit offset at different points, but it's never visible when I put it on because it squishes all together like this and I put it around my neck and it looks just fine. The reason I wanted to show that to you is so that all of you out there that are like, oh my gosh, I can't get this to look right, it really is going to look just fine however you're going to put it together. As long as your seam is not like super huge and bulky and one side is like like up here and the other side is down here, it's gonna turn out perfectly fine. And when you put on your cowl, it will be beautiful. Should I put this on? Let me see if I can put it on without messing up the, the microphone. The microphone's probably all messed up now, but you can see as it wears, it's nice and neat, right? All right, I'll take this one off now. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, now you know how to make your birdseed cowl. I hope you will run out and get some Red Heart Boutique Treasures yarn in the wonderful colorways that are available and they all have the long color changes so you will not be disappointed as you're working along in your project. It's so exciting to see what the next color is going to be. Don't forget, this is a free pattern over on redheart.com where you can find a variety of other patterns as well. Anything you happen to be looking for, it's probably available over there on Red Heart. Here on the Marley Bird YouTube channel, I try and do a lot of videos to show you different techniques and projects for both knitting and crochet. You can think of me as your online knitting and crochet instructor. Make sure you hit subscribe so you're up to date whenever there's a new video released. And as my kids say, smash that like button. I'm Marley Bird for redheart.com and this is the Bird Seed Cowl. Talk to you guys later. Bye.